We bless the Lord today because of what he's done for us. He's brought us through some dangerous times. You believe say amen. And God is so good. God is so awesome. God is so kind. Amen. That he saw fit to let us come into his house one more time. Do you not know that we all have a destiny? And regardless of who you are, what you got in life, you know you're going to die on time. Yes, you will, beloved. You're going to die on time. Amen. Amen. I said you're going to die on time. Amen. Amen. No matter where you are in life, remember now, at one point in this lifetime, God has ordained for that body that you're living in right now to put you out. Amen. And can't nobody change it. And I'm glad, amen, that God tell us, amen, that, uh, Psalms 90, so then teach us the number of our days and to apply our hearts to wisdom. I do honor the Lord today. I thank God for Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, amen. I praise the Lord for blessing us to see one more day. You know, God didn't have to let us be here. Did you not know that back in eternity somewhere, it was ordained by God that you to be here this morning? Amen. Nothing happens without God. Everything happens with God. Amen. And wherever you are in life now, it's because of God. You just say amen. And I'm just glad that God ordained for us to be in his house one more time. Amen. And as I said, amen, a while back, and I, I believe even as late as last Sunday, I said we're going to be, uh, when we get through with this, uh, with next few weeks, amen, you're going to be a lot more wiser. You'll be a lot more stronger. Hallelujah. And you'll be a lot more powerful. And that's what it's all about, having power with God. You really say amen. Hallelujah. And as I said before, there's power in living holy. Don't make no mistake, amen. Praise God. Going to church is good, but you know you can't get saved just anywhere. You weren't born just anywhere. Amen. God had a set place for you to get to come into this world and God has a set time for you to get saved and you can't get saved. It ain't no such thing as go to the church of your choice. Amen. Because if you, we let you choose, you'll go to a church. Amen. When a man don't call your hand, you'll be saying, Amen. Hallelujah. You can't be strong in God drinking milk. Amen. You know, even a baby, when that baby is born, at, at some point, he's going to have to be weaned off of his mother's breast. Amen. 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 And you mothers know this, that if that child never gets weaned, do you not know that milk that nourished him at first would turn around and poison that baby? Amen. Well, amen now. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I make no apology for what I am. I make no apology for who I am. I make no apology for preaching this gospel. God called me. God saved me. God delivered me. And then he gave me a charge. You'll be saying, man, if you have your Bible, let's go to the word of God. And I, 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 I don't know who had the idea, but uh, I want this done, the Lord's will, on next Sunday. We've got a whole box of notepads back there. Amen. Amen. I don't know who, who done it, but I'm, I appreciate you. Amen. 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 Brother Collins, we, are you on? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I appreciate you. We're going to hand those notepads out. I want you writing these scriptures down. What makes you powerful is not just hearing the word of God, but going back behind that man to make sure that man is right. You be say amen. And you can't, be, you can't know he's right unless you got the spirit that wrote the book. And there's one thing that's been... There's, there is a doctrine... That God has ordained in his house that has been overlooked and even in these latter days perverted. It's talking about being filled with the Holy Ghost. You can't be holy without him. You really say amen. When you get saved, you get cleaned up from your sins and you're put back in right standing with God as Adam was before he backslid. But in order to stay saved, yes, I say stay saved, you're going to have to be filled with the power. You believe it, say amen. Acts 1 and 8, you shall receive what? When? 
after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and not before. Why? Because if you clean a vessel up and don't fill it with what need to be put in there, some else is coming in there. And the Bible declares in Luke 11, 24, that when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man and it takes the power of God to cast the devil out of you, you may be say amen. But after the devil comes out, you got to put somebody else in there in his place. If not, he's coming back. And this time, beloved, you won't be the same old sinner amen you'll be a seven times worse eight times eight times worse than when you were before you god saved you you believe say amen. amen when the unclean spirit goes out of a man he walks through dry places seeking rest and, and if you ever been put out those you know how miserable that is and that demon is gonna go somewhere and i know they don't preach on that doctrine no more but if you can't kill us kill a demon if you cannot kill a spirit then guess what He's still here. Amen. The series we've been getting ready to stretch out on, we're going to deal with the holiness of God. We talk a lot about God is a good God. Yes, he is. God is a merciful God. Yes, he is. But honey, his character is holy. And amen. And when he called us, he called us for one purpose and one purpose only to be his children and like daddy, like children, you believe me, say amen. If the daddy is a whole monger, guess what? Amen. Mama's a whole, guess what? Amen. amen. But now if mama is holy, the children are holy. If daddy is holy, the children are what? We're the offspring. You believe me, say amen. That's the whole purpose of getting born again. You know, I, I just can't help it get saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. R Romans 1. Brother John, I want you to get me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, G. First Timothy chapter, chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Romans 1 and verse 1. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ. Read. Jesus Christ Please. called to be an apostle. Hold what you got. He's a servant. Uh -huh. And that's one word that preachers don't want to talk too much about. And uh, let me clue you in. I'm a servant. If I lay my hands on you in prayer and God delivers you, I just serve you deliverance. You people say amen. If I preach the gospel and you get delivered through the preaching of the gospel, then I have just served you deliverance. You people say amen. Thank you, Lord. If you hungry and I feed you, I just serve you food. Yes, Hallelujah. This man said, Paul, and the first thing he wants us to understand that, yeah, he is an apostle, but his apostleship is demanded service. He said, I'm a servant. If you, and, and if you do research on that word there, through the scripture, you'll find that he said, I'm a slave. I'm a slave to him. In other words, I, I just got to, I must obey my master. I'm a servant of Jesus Christ. Read. Called to be an apostle. And then I'm called. What am I called to be? An a servant. And an apostle is somebody that God has anointed and gifted to not only establish churches all over the, un amen, the United States and the world for that matter. Not only to establish churches, but to teach those churches how to live. You believe me, say amen. amen. In a sense, that's what I am. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I know this teaching that I give, amen, praise God, is not, not strange to you that know me. But if you notice... Go back and get the CDs or the tapes that you got wherever I preach. You notice I preach from this New Testament more than I preach from anywhere else. Why? Because we are New Testament saints. We look back in the Old Testament and we use that, amen, as a guideline. But those things do not teach us the deep things of God. You may say amen. Until we get over here in these epistles and it teach us how to love one another. How to live before God. How to act right. How to treat folks right. How to be right. You believe say amen. Separated. Separated. That means to be sanctified. 
And you know, years ago, in some of these other places, they, amen, they talked about the saints so bad. Hallelujah. I don't want them over in my church tearing up my benches. That's all right. You ain't got no benches now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I don't want, you know, they so, they so, they so different. Well, we're in the book. When you live different, you stick out like a sore thumb. You be say amen. And I had this present in my life. Some of you saints been saved. Well, you know this to be true. The very ones that talk about you like a dog, when they get in trouble, they know where to come. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And this little old building councils have dried up and dissolved. Amen. The dead's been raised right in here. Amen. Why? Because God feel comfortable doing what he did. It, somebody call it Bible days. But honey, we still in Bible days. Jesus Christ the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Behold, Malachi 3 and 6, I'm the Lord thy God and I change it not. What I did years ago, I do that. I do wherever I feel comfortable. Amen. You don't even say amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. I thank God for the ministers and missionaries. I thank God for the, the, the preachers that have come and visited here. But one thing is true. They can't be me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm the son that God put over this house here. I'm the one that's got to get an account of y'all. Amen. And I believe, I, I believe I'm going to give an account in peace. Amen. I'm one preacher. Praise God. If you don't want to live right, I'll put you out. You know why? Because if, it don't, if you don't learn to live right, you're not demanded to live right from this pulpit, then another spirit is going to take control of this church. Amen. As long as I'm living, it'll never happen. You know why? Because all of the blessings that God does for us here, if another spirit comes in, you better know God going to move out. If we don't preach holy doctrine, tell you that God demands us to separate ourselves Amen. from people. Amen. Amen. Sure, they call it, you know, you're holier than thou. Just because you don't laugh at their dirty jokes. Soon as you get saved, amen, praise God. Them that you used to go to hang out with, praise God. When you get saved, now you're coming to church, so they talk about you like a dog. And he got caught up in that Jesus mess. That's all right. He that lasts, lasts, lasts the longest. And what many of us fail to realize that's walking on the face of this earth today is that we got to meet God. You even say amen. And when we meet God, we can't be, there's no pretending there. Hallelujah. Whatever you are, it's going to, your whole life is going to come before you. Amen. And all the things that you try, you thought you was keeping secret. All of them that's going to be judged with you going to be beholding all of that wickedness amen. that you thought you was getting away with in the dark. You'll be the same man. Paul, an apostle. Read. Separated unto, Separated the, gospel unto God, the gospel of God. Read. Which he had promised afore by his prophet. What was the promise? That after Adam sinned, he was going to send Jesus Christ. How are we going to know who Jesus Christ is if God didn't anoint a man to send him to testify who Jesus is? Read it. Which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scripture. The, all of the prophets pointed toward the coming of the Messiah. You believe me, say amen. Read it. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ. There it Lord. is. Read it. Which was made of the seed of David. He was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. He came down through the lineage of David. That's like I came down through Jesse James Green, amen, and Evelina Green, my grandmama, great-grandma, great right on back. I came down through that line. Jesus Christ came down through the lineage of David. You believe me, say amen. According to the flesh. You believe me, say amen. Read. And declared to be the But wait son a minute. He it is. He was declared to be the son of God with power. According to the spirit of According Lord. to the spirit of God. Holiness. Thank you, Lord. You know, even when I wasn't saved, I ain't want no nasty person. When I was out there in the world, I ain't want no nasty woman sleeping around there. Well, ain't mine now. Amen. And when we get over here and get saved, we think God gonna just accept anything. Amen. But remember now, 
Remember the woman that was shacking? You remember in John chapter 4, he went over to Samaria. He told the disciples, look, at, I got a need to go through Samaria, not around Samaria. I got to go through Samaria because there's a woman over there shacking. You really say amen. Thank you, Lord. And I think, praise God, you know, God had got time. And amen, after her and this fella, she was shacking up. We had got through doing what they was going to do. She went down the, to the well to get some water. And guess, guess who came? He was sitting out waiting on just like salvation waits on us. You people say amen. The Bible says his hand is stretched out to human mankind. Amen. But we said, get back, God, get back. I, I ain't ready to get saved yet. I got too much I want to do. I got too much I need to do. I ain't seen the world. You mean say, man. Then when you get out there and the world mop the floor with you, I should have stayed with you. I should have stayed at home. You mean say, man. And when she came in and prayed, Jesus said, give me a drink of water. I said, whoa, wait a minute here. Ah, back that train up. Ah, what did you say? Give me a drink of water. Now, you know good and well. You black folks ain't got nothing to do with us white folks. And you know you white folks ain't got nothing to do with us black folks. You know you Baptists ain't got nothing to do with us Pentecostals. And you know what us, uh, us Baptists ain't got nothing to do with you. Amen. Correct. Charismatics. And you know us Church of God in Christ ain't got nothing to do with, with you Methodists. So, so you know we ain't got no kind of dealings. Hallelujah. And Jesus said, woman, if you only knew who it was that was talking to you, you would have asked me and I would have told you. Hallelujah. And then he, he, he started preaching to her a little bit, praise God. And she said, you know what? I, I, I want this water. He said, well, go call your husband. Huh? I want this living water you talking about. Go call your husband. And she said, look at him. I ain't got none. He said, if you never told the truth in your life, you told it then. You had five. And the one you got now belongs to somebody else. You'll be saying, man. So we know they wasn't. She didn't have a, his ring on her finger. Thank you, Lord. Jesus got through messing with her, praise God. I tell you what, she got in high gear. You mean to say, man, she came for one thing, and later she got something on the inside that made her, amen, he turned the prostitute into a missionary. You mean to say, man, thank you, Lord. And when she got home, I, in my mind, now, in my mind, I think old Johnny was laying up there with his hands behind his head, you know, feeling pretty good. You know what I mean? And she said, son, you got to get, get your ass, get out. That's a new man in town. You believe me? Say, man. Thank you, Lord. You mean to tell me all we'd have been? Get your ass, get out. And honey, she didn't stop at her house, but the Bible says she started talking, telling everybody in the city, come see a man that told me everything I did. You believe me? Say, man. Is this not the son? Ain't this the one we looking for? But you know, I want you to notice when you read that. Jesus started dealing with her and she throwed up her religion. Just look at him. Our dad is worshipped up him. That, that's to get him off of her now. To get him off of her. Our dad is worshipped down here. You Jews talking about we ought to go down to Jerusalem where I say, woman, you worship, you know not what. Because salvation comes through the Jews. You believe me, say man. Hallelujah. Boy, he tightened up, didn't he? Huh? Didn't he tighten up? Thank you, Lord. And for many of us, we need just to, somebody to hit us with the truth. Amen. And God, being God and merciful, he's going to make sure that before you leave this world, you're going to hear the truth at least once. Why? Because he'd be unjust to condemn you without giving you a chance to do right. You believe me? Say amen. That's what the spirit of holiness is. It makes you do right. Back that train up. It leads you to do right. All right. If God made us live right, it'll be a different thing. Then he wouldn't have to worry about nobody backsliding. But honey, the Holy Ghost present this word to us and tell us live by this. Matthew 4 and 4, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. And it's God talking, I dare say he is. Yeah. Right. But you can't believe everything you hear on the radio or the television. Hallelujah. See, every evangelist God don't send. Every preacher God didn't send. Second Corinthians 11 chapter and the 13th verse for such are false apostles, deceitful workers. These are the preachers that are telling you to don't worry about it. 
It's once in Christ and never you. If you ever accept Christ anywhere in your life, you can't backslide and go to hell. Hold that. Revelation 3 and 5. Get that for me. The Bible calls us overcomers. And the thing we overcome is not the devil. The, our greatest enemy, you look at him every morning when you get in the mirror. You'll be the same man. If the devil is going to destroy you, he's going to use you to destroy yourself. Thank you, Lord. Revelation 3 and 5, to him that overcome in the Bible said we're more than conquerors through him. That, amen, praise God, that loved us. All right, Revelation 3 and 5, read. He that overcome. He, not it. So we know he's got to be talking about church folks. Amen. Read it. The same shall be clothed. The same shall be clothed. In white raiment. And I know we don't want to put no clothes on nowadays, ladies. Hallelujah. See, there's a spirit of lewdness that's in the land today. Amen. Amen. A spirit of looseness. Who, who, who could tell me what virtue is? It means pure, holy, high standards, high moral standards. Amen. But if you're dressing with it all tight and all stuck out and slits and splits and all right, now. all right, and then the way that spirit of rape is going on now, then you get raped and now them devils don't, and, and she can identify you, kill her. All right, you round up over in the river somewhere. Trying to keep up with what the devil put on you. Amen. And however the women go in the country, that's how the country's going to go. Amen. Amen now. We ain't even got to be smart on this one. We ain't even got to be smart. Look at Denmark. In Denmark, they had the gospel preached to them. I, I mean, know what Denmark is. It's close to Sweden. Now, you know, the, the folks with the blonde, you know what I mean? They had the gospel preached to them, and then all of a sudden, because of the, the government, they gave an open statement saying, we don't want him no more. And brother, I'm telling you, if it ever was an epidemic of AIDS that they ain't putting on the television, because it's white folks now. It ain't black folks in Africa. It's white folks over there. And they hollering and kicking and screaming. And God has put, these are the days of vengeance. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. What did it say? To him that overcome it. The same. The same. Shall be clothed, shall be white clothed with white raiment. That's the purity and the holiness of the bride of Christ. Free. And I will not blot out his name. Now notice now, I will not blot out his name. Where? Out of the book of life. All right. Hold what you got there. Revelation 21 and 8. Right. Brother John, you stay there. I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. In order for your name to get blotted out, it must first be in there. Right. Revelation 21 and 8. Read it. But the fearful, the fearful and unbelieving read, and the abominable read, and murderer read, and homers and sorcerers read, and idolaters read, and all liars, all liars shall read, have their part read, in the lake which burneth with fire read, and stone, read, which is the second death. Read it. Which is the what? Second death. And, it's, and have that name. What did it say about the book of life? Whose names were what? All whose names were not written in the book of life. And what did it say, Brother John? What did it say, Brother John? Revelation 3 and 5. To him that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And what? I will not. I will not blot out his, his name, name out, out of the, the book, book of, life. of life. So it ain't no such thing as once in Christ and never out. Once saved, always saved. Amen. Amen. Now, if we're going to come to church and live like everybody else, where's the difference? All right, I'm going to ask a question. How many belong to God? I'm not even going to look. Just hold your hand up. How many belong to God? All right. Now, you got to vote now. If God asks you a question, you got to vote. All right, I'm going to look now. Amen. Amen. I drove up here in that car out there. That car don't run me. I run it. How many see where I'm going with this? 
that car don't I don't obey that car that car is at my beck and call it obeys me you may be saying man if I don't put the key in and crank it up and put it in gear it ain't going nowhere you may be saying man why I own the car I own it that's mine it do what I want it to do and not one time have I put the key in and it it didn't decide that it didn't want to go nowhere. It doesn't have that privilege. All right, now how many belong to God? Well, I tell you, Luke 6 and 46, he asks a question. Why call me, get that for me. Why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things I say? How can I say I belong to him and won't obey him? Back up here. Many times in me pray God, we, 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 we laud the pastor and the pastor this and the pastor that. And, and we, we ain't going to see where that man coming out the scriptures. He tell you to do something. If he ain't got no Bible for it, he wrong and you wrong too. The Bible declares, amen, praise God, obey them that have the rule over you. What is the rule? The Bible. And when he lead the Bible, you lead him. You even say amen. Paul the apostle said, follow me as I follow Christ. In other words, if I stop following Christ, you stop following me. Why? The scripture says, consider the end of that conversation. Where you're heading? Where you're heading? If you're going to hell, you can go by yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. Who got it? Who got it? And why call ye me? And why call ye me? Lord, Lord. Lord, Lord. And do not the things, do not I, say. The things I say. Say. What did he say over in his, this scripture here? This new, this new Testament. He told us to love one another, didn't he? Amen. Then he, then he do so. Jesus, the, 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 the fact, one of the big shots asked him a question. Lord, what's the great, greatest commandment? With his chest all stuck out. He said, I'll tell you what. Love you. Amen. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your strength, everything within you. But he didn't stop there. And he said a second is like unto the first to love your neighbor as yourself. I believe first John picked it up. First John 3 14 say praise God. He that loveth not his brother is a murderer. Amen. So you know what that does for us? We put down line and backbite and amen, praise God, and me talking against this one. And what is it about when folks get something to make other folks get red around their eyes? Amen. amen. Sister Jane gets a new dress. That old heifer, it don't look right on her. That look better on me. Well, how come your money didn't buy it then? Don't you get quiet on me. Every time I turn around, Brother John, getting, he getting a new suit or something. Amen. Amen. Huh? Every time I turn around, so and, so, and they always up testifying. And you ain't going to get up because you'll test a lot. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We're living in that time now where holiness, which is separation and consecration to God, that's the last thing on anybody's mind. Everywhere you go now, you turn the pre-TV preachers on, radio preachers on. You know, what's, what's the message? Prosperity. But well, we ain't telling you how to be prosperous. Huh? Our solution to your prosperity is that you send us your money and we're going to send you our teaching tape. The devil is a lie. Third John and two, but love that would above all things that you prosper. Yeah. And be in help, yeah. Even as your soul prosper, and your soul can't prosper without this here. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus put it better than any of us ever could. Matthew 6 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. And then God start adding certain things on. Amen. You ain't got to do, amen. You ain't got to connive to get it. You believe me, say amen. All you got to do is live right. Amen. All you got to do is live holy and God start adding things on to you. You believe me, say amen. Amen. Well, we come to the altar filthy and we get a quote, quote unquote a touch and boo-hoo a little bit. We ain't got no intention of putting Johnny out. We ain't got no intention of leaving Sally alone. 
We ain't got no intention, amen, to quit cussing folks out on the job. Amen, amen, amen. Huh? I'll lay my religion down. Show you will. Because that's all you got. See, but to go to heaven, you got to be saved. Huh? You can't have religion. You got to be saved. You believe me, say amen. You can't be a church member. You got to be saved. You believe me, say amen. amen. And I go a step further and then obey God's word. You believe me, say amen. amen. Come on, come on back with that thing. Amen. Pray of Romans 1. Call to be an apostle. Read. A servant of Jesus Christ. Read. Call to be an apostle. Read, brother John. You still, in, you still in 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy 2, 1. I mean, chapter 1. All right. Read, sir Jim. Of God, read which he had promised afore by his prophet. Read in the Holy Scripture. now. I want you to notice what we're reading here. Don't, don't 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 look over this. Read it concerning his son Jesus Christ, read. our Lord, read. which was made of the seed of David read. according to the flesh. Read it and declared to be the Son of God with power read. according to the Spirit of Holy. Read now. Listen what she's giving her to read here. Read. By the resurrection from the dead. Read. By whom we have received grace. When and God apostles. raised him from the dead, grace came our way. Grace. Hallelujah. God, now, in the book of Ephesians, the Bible says there was a time when we were not a people. I'm talking about everything that wasn't born a Jew, God wasn't paying you no attention. And when Jesus Christ, Christ came on the scene, you remember the Syrophoenician woman? Remember her daughter was vexed with a devil and Jesus wouldn't even pay that woman no attention. And when he did say something to her, he said, look, it ain't right for me to take the children's bread, which is the Jews, and give it to the dogs, those that are non-Jews. Jesus called that woman a dog. Now, you know what? One thing we do know, she couldn't have been no black woman. Amen. Hey, you laughing. I ain't, I ain't playing. Hey, Amen. It couldn't have been one of us. Amen. Hey, Amen now. You want to find a hell raiser. Hey, Amen. Because she would have cussed him out and went on about her business. Uh, that talk to the hand, talk to use a fool, amen. 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 Jesus called her a dog, she said, yeah, but the dog get the crumbs. You people say, amen. All I want is a crumb. You people say, amen. My baby is vexed with a dog. I need your help, brother. She pulled some out of Jesus Christ. It's not a lot of them that Jewish bunch of following him couldn't get. She rats right down in here and touched the, the thing called compassion. You believe me, say man. And Jesus told her, go on your house. Go on to your house. Honey, when he gave that word, that devil came out. And wait a minute. They were not next door. Huh? Them devils from a distance got to come out. How many remember some of the, some of the folks that, that sent word, amen, praise God to this church here? They were staying in another state. And we prayed and God delivered. Huh? And we'll get the postcards of some say, thank the saints for praying. Thank the saints for praying, amen. It means something to be saved. You believe me, say amen. And I'll tell you one thing, praise God. It means something when you can get God to move for you. You believe me, say amen. Anybody can preach. But how about trying to get God to move for you? Huh? Amen? Anybody can teach. Amen? But how about trying to get God to heal you? You will be saying that. We talk, that's a whole new ball game then. And all of a sudden, Reverend that throws his handkerchief, and we got more clowning in the pulpit than we got anything else. See, men won't preach the word, but in order to get your mind off of them not preaching God's word, they do acrobats and everything not got a hum. They call it a hoop. I heard one fella told me, he said, you going to bark today? I ain't going to tell you what I told him. Amen. Hallelujah. Because the Holy Ghost rose up. Amen. I, and I, 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 I said what I need to say. Amen. He told me what to say. And he ain't never said that no more. Amen. Huh? I'm not a dog. I don't bark. Hallelujah. I preach God's word. Why? Because the devil is afraid of God's word. You believe me, say man. And when it's anointed of God's man preaching God's word, the Bible declares God got to back it up. You believe me, say man. My word will not go out and come back to me void, but it shall accomplish that way until I send it. You believe me, say man. And when we send that word, amen, Psalms 107 and 20, he sent his word to heal them. Them and to deliver them. You believe me, say amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. He said his word. 
Woo, my God. And let me show you something about holiness. Hallelujah. When you come to your deepest trial, when you have enemies all around you, you remember who you are in Christ and the holiness of God that's in you. The Bible says Christ in us, the hope of glory. I, I believe it's in Second Chronicles chapter 20. About three nations came up against Jehoshaphat. And I'm talking about thousands upon thousands of enemies all got together to come and destroy God's elect, God's people. And thank God for somebody that's got a ear to God. If, and if Israel had a number of their armies, honey, they was out number three to one already. But Jehoshaphat, being a man of God, he called everybody on a fast. Now that's something that we don't talk about too much nowadays. When Jesus already told us that them devils through prayer and fasting, they got to come down. The stronghold got to come down through prayer and fasting. But he put everybody on a fast. Put the cow on a fast. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. He put everything and everybody on a fast. Ain't nobody going to eat no food. Ain't nobody going to drink no water. We're going to uh, inquire help from the Lord. And brother, when they got up there, they started crying out before God in the temple. Amen. And God spoke up through the prophet Jehaziel and said, take heed. Amen. Be not afraid. The battle ain't yours. The battle is the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank God for a man of God. Hallelujah. Honey, if you on your deathbed, you don't need somebody. Praise God. You know, my mama was this. My daddy was this. Now, I'm going to die with this. My Bible bone this. No, no. When you on your deathbed sliding out and you better know somebody that's anointed with God. You be the same man. You better know somebody that's in contact with God. You be the same man. And I want you to let you know something. And not only does holiness benefit you when you live right, but honey, it'll benefit you when you die. You be the same man. Oh, hallelujah. Thank God, it'll benefit you when you die. All right. Holiness will help you live right, but it'll also ensure that you die all right. Yes, sir. You believe it, say amen. Jehazo spoke up and said, The battle ain't yours, the battle is the law. But I tell you what, tell the armies to stay home. Tell Israel to stay home. Fellas, y'all going back to the house. God getting ready to show out. Amen. Read your Bible. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Read your Bible. And God said, now, 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 but you musicians, don't y'all go nowhere. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, he's a strange God, Brother John. Huh? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And it means something to be anointed. You believe me? Say amen. Thank you, Lord. He told the singers, amen, to get before the preachers. Hallelujah. Amen. Them Levites. Them Levites. He told them singers, get up there, amen, praise God, and start talking about how beautiful and how, how wonderful God's holiness is. Worship the Lord and the beauty of holiness. And honey, they was, that's all they sung over and over again about the beauty of holiness. Worship the Lord and the beauty of holiness. Can't you see, can't you see the enemy? Boy, the enemy, it's your fool. Amen. Well, they thought Joshua and them was a fool when they went around the walls of Jericho. Pastor, you don't believe that. Listen, it's in the Bible. I got to believe it. You don't even say it bad now. Brother, he got up there and started singing, praise God. God got busy, amen. Huh? God took hailstones, amen. It rained hail from heaven, amen. Praise God. And a bunch of them tried to get away, and God cut them down. You don't even say it bad. Thank you, Lord. God, he do what he want to. And I'm glad he's in me, amen. And when he need to step up, amen, he'll step up. He'll step up, amen, praise God. My back is between a rock and a hard place. Just on this past week, I had two demons to attack me. Telling me what all they were going to do in this, that, and the other. Amen, and then they sent word. And the fella started talking to me. I said, do I look like I'm worried? Do I look like I'm scared? God gave me this job. Only God could take it away. Huh? Thank you, Lord. And that same fella that was running his mouth when I got ready to leave on Friday, just as humble. I don't know what God did to him, but I tell you one thing, boy, I tell you what, he, he just as sweet to me. Thank you, Lord. Hold your peace. Let me do, let me do what I need to do. Hold your peace. Amen. And if they don't want to straighten up, I'll judge him. But if they straighten up, I want you to pray for me not to judge him. I want you to pray for your enemies. How many ever read that? Matthew chapter 5. Love your enemies. How, how many ever read that? That's, what, that's called living holy. 
How many ever read that? Love your enemies. When they hungry, feed them. When they thirsty, give them drink. You'll be the same man. The average church member can't do that. Why? Because they don't have the one that offered the church in them. You'll be the same man. man. You can't do this in your own strength. It takes the Holy Ghost to love people that's walked over you, spit in your face. It takes the Holy Ghost. But you'll find out that in your weakness, you got power. Hallelujah. You don't know how strong you are until you get on your knees. You'll be ashamed, man. When things are going around all around you and it look like ain't looking, ain't no hope, amen. I, I believe I just throw up my hands and quit. But that's some on the inside, excuse me, somebody on the inside telling you, hold on just a little while longer. Just hold on, amen. The Bible says in Ephesians 6 and 10, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord. And the power of his might. Whew. Honey, somebody reaching up, amen. My mama had a saying, he said, son, when you get to the end of your rope, tie not in it and hang on. You'll be saved, man. Honey, I've been hanging on for a long while, my, my Colin. I've been hanging on for a long I've been saved over 20 some years. I've been preaching this gospel just about the same amount of time. And I'm telling you, the enemy has came many a time. He still comes and tells me, why don't you quit preaching all of that? Hallelujah. Whew. Huh? What you keep preaching all of that? Hallelujah. You get a big crowd if you Yeah, but wait a minute. I gotta stand for God. <laughs> huh? Amen. Hey, man. What's using having a crowd got a bunch of devils? Amen. Huh? Thank you, Lord. Why can't we just live right? Amen. Amen. Every blessing that God gives you, remember that the enemy doesn't have anything. Not now he doesn't. See, that's why I find fault with a lot of these songs. Reach over and grab your neighbor and let's talk to the devil and say, Devil, I'm coming for my stuff. The devil ain't got your stuff. Amen. Psalms 84 and 11, please. I think you would have to agree with me that if anybody has got your stuff, then they also got the power to give it to you. Am I right? So this is Jesse, you get me Psalms 24 and 1. Psalms 84 and 11, Brother John. Psalms, For, read. For the Lord God. For the Lord God. Is a son. Is a son and, and a shield. Give me the same man. Read. The Lord will give grace and glory. He will give what? Grace and glory. Read. No good thing. No what? No good thing. No good thing. Are y'all read with me? I don't know why. Everything I get is tan up. I bought a car. The car don't want to run. I amen. Pray God. I, 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 I put my money over here. I put it on the stock market and I lost every dime. I don't know why bad things happen to me. I don't know why God won't bless me. I've been sick for 20 years and God won't touch my body. Read that book. No good thing. No. I think you got to agree with me that healing is a good thing when you're sick. Amen. Money is a good thing when you're broke. Hold oh, that. Who got the money? You know, the, the white man, the white, the devil is a lie. Honey, when you're on God's side, Romans 8 and 31, if God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. Thank you, Lord. That's that old crush that we, when we lazy and don't want to do nothing, amen, praise God. You know, the white man holding me back. Listen, beloved, Joseph went down in Egypt a slave and ran up running that outfit. Amen. What is that saying to you and me? That no matter where you are, if God exalts you, can't no man pull you down. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. All right. God exalts you, can't no man touch you. No good thing. Give me that one more time. No good thing. Read. Will he withhold? Will he withhold? From them. From them. That walk uprightly. From them that's living holy. holy. Psalms 24.1. Who got the stuff now? Who got the stuff? Sorry. Huh? Psalms 24.1. Read who got the stuff. The earth is the what Lord. What did you say? The earth is the Lord. Hey, where are we? We on Mars somewhere. 
We ain't on Jupiter. We on the terra firma that they call Earth. The Earth is the law. You believe me? Say man. We. And the fullness thereof. And, the and not only let don't stop on the Earth. The world. The world. And they that dwell there. So if you live on a certain part of the earth and you say, you know, I wish God was here with me, but he way over yonder. He say the earth is a lot and the fullness of the world and they that dwell therein. You remember say man. And if we live in here, that means God is here with us. Thank you, Lord. To meet our needs, to bring us up and out. You remember say man. You can't come to church and they praise God depressed and leave depressed. Now that you get a hold of God's word, you believe me, say man. You can't come sick and leave sick. Now if you get a hold of God's word, you believe me, say man. You can't come broke and leave broke. Now that you get a hold of God's word, we honor God by believing his word. You believe me, say man. See, everybody hears, but not everybody hears. Jesus said, he that have an ear, let him hear. Oh my God. So when the word of God comes forth, the enemy sets up on your shoulders and now you know you left your eye on it. You know what I mean? You know you, you left them beans cooking. Huh? Your mind ain't in the service. Your mind is somewhere else. That's what he does. He's a deceiver. He got to get your mind off of what's being preached so it'll go over your head and the devil can deceive you. You'll be saved, man. Amen. The enemy cannot stand truth. Jesus said he was a liar and there's no truth in him. He couldn't abide in the truth. You read, you read your Bible. It's in John 8, 44. He told the Pharisee, you have your father the devil. You're just like your daddy. Whenever truth comes, you buck up against truth. Thank you, Lord. But the person that surrenders to God, they said, Lord, give me some more. Give me some more. I know you're whooping me, praise God. I may be here today, but I won't be here no more. Thank you, Lord. I may, amen, I may not be up to part of the day, but I tell you what, after the day, I'm going to, amen, I'm going to come on up to the mark. Could be the same man. Oh my God. Thank you, Lord. That's what makes us powerful. And the devil don't want us to know that there's power in living a separated life. Well, Pastor, now I know some saints. <laughs> that's, that, that, that's really going through. And uh, they've been around here for 40 years, 50 years. And, you know, they, they living a dime with a dog meat. Huh? And the Lord is blessing them. Are you sure? Are you sure? See, people got a way of deceiving you. <laughs> Amen. That's why you can't judge, Amen, how people dress, whether or not God is blessing them or not. Amen. You can't judge what they drive, Amen, by what whether God is blessing them or not. Hallelujah. I'll tell you what a true blessing is. God give you a car. I'm talking to you. I tell you what a true blessing is. God give you house and land. That's what a blessing is. Amen. In the book of Proverbs, it said, The blessing of the Lord make it rich, and he add no sorrow to it. I tell you what a blessing is. When God supernaturally cancel your debts. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. But some folks so caught up, amen, praise God in money. And that's it. Amen. In the book of Revelation, you read, please read this when you get home. In Revelation chapter 3, the last church in there is the church of Laodicea. He, they, they, here's their testimony. Jesus is telling off on them. He's speaking concerning the things that are going on in their heart. They say, you know, we, we rich and we increase with goods we got houses and land and money amen praise god and we got clothes and amen praise god we we got a different car to ride in every day of the week we so blessed but i sure can stand a little bit more loud say we rich and increase with goods and don't have need of nothing including god until we want some and jesus said amen you don't even know that you're poor <laughs> wretched blind and naked and i counsel thee to buy me gold try to if i see anything that's worth having you gotta fight for it you believe me say man thank you lord if somebody give you something you won't take care of it as much as you take care of something that you work you bled, sweat blood and tears for am i right thank you lord gold tried in the fire 
and to buy me eyesight off because you're blind. You say you see, but you're blind. You can't see that the devil got your eyes on them material things so much until you're going to lose your soul. Luke 9 and 23, please, please. If any man going to come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me daily. Luke 9 and 23, read it. If any man, that's black man, rich man, poor man, any man hear this gospel and come this way. If any man comes up to me, he let him deny himself, take up his crawl, read that book. And he said to them all, read. if any man will come after me. Notice now, he say any man, which means he's putting it out there. He's throwing it out there. How, how, hey, how many ever fed chickens? I feel so sorry for the, for the country, I mean the city folks. They, we just, you know, we just ain't, we amen. Hallelujah. And in, 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 in the scriptures, a, a country person can understand these scriptures a lot, a lot quicker because he's using farm and, you know, and different things like that. But when you feed chicken, you don't pour all that feed in the uh, big old pile. Huh? Somebody say amen or ouch or something. No, you, you know, yeah, chick, 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 chick. And you start throwing that feed out there. Why? You want all of them to get feed, fed, amen? Huh? Thank you, Lord. What well, Jesus said to the whole crowd, am I right? He spoke unto them all, said, if any man, you got to make that choice. That's your choice. Thank you, Lord. I would get saved, but you got to give up so much. All God is asking you to give up is hell. Amen. And I know, I know we ain't talking about that no more because, see, that'll run folks off. Amen. But whether you're here or not, you're still going. If you're not saved, don't you turn that dial off. Amen. Read that book. If any man will come out Read it. Him, let him deny himself. Now, now, I tell you, when's the last, other than maybe here and a few other places, when's the last time you ever heard that verse preached or taught? We got a lot of teaching now. Huh? We got a whole lot of teaching. You know, God, God is so concerned about you that he really wants you to be blessed. And, and here's my question. If the man is a prophet, why don't he talk to you about your lying? Read your Bible. Elijah confronted Ahab and called his hand, told him about his sin. You read me say amen. When Nathan came to David, y'all remember David? The man after God's own heart? When David committed adultery and had that woman's husband killed, God sent Nathan down there. And if he had been one of these modern fellows we got today, King, look at him. Now you know you the man. And you all of this. Nathan went down that tunnel and said, I'll tell you one thing, praise God, the sword going to abide at your house till the day you die. You took that man's wife. You had him killed. Amen. And I don't read why David threatened that, that, that prophet. I don't read that. That man fell on his knees. You'll be saying, man, and beg God pardon. You'll be saying, man, God killed that baby. God killed that baby. Then let it come back, amen. David fasted and prayed for that, and God didn't let that baby live. All right, what happened to David? His, one of his sons raped his daughter, incest. All right, Absalom, Absalom killed that son because Tamar was his, blood, his sister. And you know, amen, David had wives, W-I-V-E-S. And Tamar and Absalom were from this, had the same mama. Amen. And Absalom got mad and killed that boy. Ran David off the throne. And took his same wife, amen, his same wives, W-I-V-E-S, and committed adultery on the housetop before all of it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. When he lusted after Bathsheba, it was good, them two, three minutes, 15, whatever it was. But it cost him. Why? This man was in full knowledge that God gave him everything he had. God separated him for his use and his use only. David was already in full knowledge that God's, uh, God don't look on the outward appearance like we do. God looks on the man's heart. You read it in, uh, in Psalms 50. The Bible says, gather my saints together. Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. What sacrifice can we possibly give God other than our lives? Huh? 
I was talking to my wife on yesterday. We was going to Longview, and I said, you know, if I cut myself and I take a drop of that blood and put it up on a microscope and let it sit there for about, let's say, two, three years, 20 years, 30 years, do you not know that microscope being so, that is so intensified, it can still look through that dry, inside that dry blood and see all of them molecules, amen, going back and forth in there? Well, amen, somebody. Huh? The Bible said the life is in the blood. Why do you think they didn't offer, amen, praise God? They had to offer that blood in the Old Testament when they slaughtered them animals, amen, and put that blood in the basin and offer it up before God. They didn't offer the animal up. They offered the blood. You believe me? Say amen. Man. Why? The animal was dead, but the blood was still alive. Oh, hallelujah. Man. The blood was still alive. The life was still in that blood. All right? All right. When I get over here in, in God's family, give me Romans 12 and 1, please. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your... Romans 12 and 1. Read. I beseech you Y'all hold on just a little bit. We're going to bring it in just a little bit. All right, read. I beseech you, therefore, brethren. Now, notice he's talking to brethren. And, Brother John, you already got first, uh, Second Timothy 1, right? Yes, sir. All right. The call that we got, uh, hold what you got right there. Mm-hmm. So, Jesse, you go back to where you was, Romans 1. All right, come on, Brother John. I beseech you, therefore, Read. brethren, Read. by the mercies of God, Read. that you present your bodies. Now, we're familiar with presence. Now, now you know we are. Well, you know we are. You know, they got a holiday they call Christmas. Jesus ain't never been in that. You know, we got, got to put Christ back in Christmas. Christ, 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 notice, break that word up. Christ mass. Now, who on earth, when it comes to religion, have mass? Amen. Same thing as Easter. That's a pagan holiday. You find it one time in the Bible, and it was at the time when they arrested Peter, put him in prison. But you don't see the saints worshiping on no Easter. Why? Because Easter it worships the God of Astarte, Amen. The demon Astarte, which means the goddess of fertility, which means she's the goddess of sex, and there ain't no such devil. Not in God's house, it ain't. Hallelujah. And you know, and, and the pastor won't let us have Easter eggs, hunch. That's all right. Amen. I'm hunting. I'm hunting for your soul. That's an amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm hunting every Sunday. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Every now and then I catch one. Amen. I, I learned to be a good fisherman. Amen. Huh? Many times you can't throw the same bait out there. You got to put something else out there. Read that book. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, Read. by the mercies of God, Read. that you present your body. Now, how many ever read this in your Bible? Amen. Read. A living sacrifice. A what? A living Remember sacrifice. Remember now, life is in the blood. Are you dead? No, sir. Are you dead? You still here, ain't you? Amen. Now, here's the thing. Why take a chance? <laughs> Hallelujah. When the word of God comes and God said, come unto me, come to me, all you that live in heaven. Lay. In other words, you leave me because you're doing your own thing. You're going your own way. That's why you're having a rough time of it. But when you come to me, I'm going to straighten everything out. And then not only that, I'm going to give you peace in your heart. And that's the one thing that has escaped the church world. That's why we grafting after this and trying to pull this in. Have you ever seen so much lukewarmness in God's house now? Amen. Amen. Women's coming in. Amen. Praise God. And they tutus and talking about a praise dance and all of this. And the devil is a lie. Hallelujah. Not only that, but we got some of all, everything that's the flooded in here in God's house. And we ain't got too many men of God that stand up, you know, because he'll split the church. Amen. Amen. If he quit us having plate lunches and all of that. Show me where Jesus. You know when Jesus came to Jerusalem, he took a made a whip and whooped every one of them devils out of his house that was buying and selling. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Why? Yeah. My house is a house of prayer. Yeah. But you made it a den of thieves. That you know, y'all gotta get one more dollar. They had, had some of that bunch over here in the church of God of Christ. Amen. Praise God. And give till it hurts. That's why they hate me. That's why they hate me. I think a preacher ought to have a job. You believe it's hate man. Amen. Paul the apostle had more Holy Ghost than I'll ever dare have. And that man said in first Corinthians, said, I work with my own hands so that no man can say I'm laying up on the church. Amen. 
Call me, 742-2438. Write me, 3225 Murphy Street, Bossier City, Louisiana. I be, I love to give you the scriptures. I ain't going to tell us to argue with nobody. Feed them the word, amen. If you can't, you're a reprobate if you can't accept the word. Read that book. I beseech you that for a bracket by the mercies of God that you present your body a living sacrifice holy and, and acceptable, acceptable unto, unto God. God. Wait a minute. Is he going to accept anything? I think not. Holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. service. And wait a minute. The only way you can do this, verse 2, read that please and be not conformed, and be not conformed to, to this, this world to this world but be ye transformed but, but what be ye transformed now when i used to love watching cartoons you know that we they had one they called transformers mm -hmm. hallelujah amen praise god but in this case he's talking about us transforming and staying where we at not coming back into what we was you be say amen, amen. Huh? be not conformed to this world why why First John chapter 2, amen, love not the world, neither the things, T-H-I-N-G-S, that are in the world. Why? For all that's in the world, the lust of your flesh, the lust of your eyes, and you know good and well, everything we see, we want. Amen. Go ahead, get quiet. You know, we, uh, you know, uh, and, and, and the advertisers know this. You can't be happy unless you get my car. You can't be happy unless you get, you know what I mean. huh? You got to have this to be happy. The devil is alive. The Bible says, amen, the man that has godliness with contentment is great gain. Why? Because ain't nobody digging in your pocketbook. Man. Nah, you, we got to keep up with the John. Honey, the John just got two jobs. Two jobs is for two people. Man. I may die broke, but I won't die tired. Amen. <laughs> amen. Oh, hallelujah. Don't be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing, renewing of, of your, your mind, mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect W-I-L-L, not W-I-L-L-S. I know I ain't supposed to marry that man. I know he ain't saved, Pastor. But you marry him anyway. And I'm going to convert him. No, you, you's a fool. That's it. Amen. Amen. He let you come to church until we get married. I don't want you going back over there. Uh, amen. Why? You just married the devil's young. You need to say amen. Pastor, I want you to pray for my husband. That God will help him. God will either make him get right or get going. I can't pray that. Why? The devil's got enough right to be there just like God got enough right to be there. And you brought that on yourself. Because you thought you was in love, but in actuality you were just in lust. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You, 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 this, this word don't have no place in you. John 8, 37. He told him, he said, you, you know, the reason why you can't receive what I'm preaching is because my word don't have no place in you. Amen. Long as I was, I didn't come. You had, Amen. You had a covering for your sin, but now that I'm a priest of truth, you ain't got no cloak for your sin. Amen. But Jesus cut him to the quick, Amen, sweetheart. I, I, I'm telling you, if I was there and, and we could take snapshots, honey, we'd see more. Me, we'd see the faces, Amen. The frowns, I beat that red around the eyes, Amen. Jesus cut them to the quick. Well, you know why? Because they were the religious leaders that's supposed to know the Bible and live by the Bible. But Jesus told them in Matthew 23, "You woe unto you, scribes, you Pharisee, you hypocrite, because you know what's right and you won't do right, and you bring people under bondage, laying heavy burdens on them, and you won't lift them with one of your fingers." Man. That's you. That's why they put him on that cross. Man. He was taking away all their church members. Amen. <sighs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He was taking away all their church members. All right. You know folks ain't right when they have respect to persons. Amen. Amen. While he teaching in the temple, they brought a woman caught in, uh, notice now, caught in the act of adultery, which means that doubt, she wasn't doing adultery by herself. Amen. But now, I done read this many years, many times, and nowhere in there have I seen where they brought a man. Don't even name the man. Amen. They just brought the woman. 
And if I go back and read it again, I still ain't going to find no man that they brought in there. Amen. And they're going to bust up the service, you know. Like some of us, amen. Praise God, amen. I, I got a reputation, amen. Don't mess with that. He'll, he'll, he'll put you out, amen. Hallelujah, amen. I feel like casting out a devil anyway, amen. Hallelujah. When they brought to, hey, look here, we caught in the very act. Of the, now, now Moses said, now we're going to go Bible now. Moses said, my, my Lorene, that when we catch him, they're supposed to be stoned to death. What you got to say about it? And when he wouldn't say nothing to me, he just kept on, kept on writing. And they just egging him on. Amen. Pray God. Finally, amen. Pray he rolled up saying, now you that ain't got nothing, no sin in your life, you devil you. Now, now that's the Douglas, you know, I'm adding that in. Amen. You devil you. Amen. Because he already told him in John 8, 44, they of the father death. You devil you. If you ain't got no sin in your life, you throw the first stone. And the scripture, you read it from the greatest of them to the least of them. From the big devils that was leading the mob to the little devils that was falling the mob. Every one of them. Can't you hear all them rocks dropping? Amen. Praise God. One, he was giving, just getting ready to throw. Amen. When Jesus hit him with that word. Amen. Praise God. He, he hung his, he hung his head down, Tom Dooley. Amen. Huh? He kind of just eased on out of the crowd. Amen. Why? I believe the man that was committing the dirty will was one of them devils. You believe me? Say man. But they had respect the passion. Man. God calls our hand too. Yes, he does. I'm going to help this one. I ain't going to help them. Use a lie. I'm going to be good to this one. I ain't going to bother them. Use a, use a lie. Amen. The truth ain't in you. James said, don't have the grace of God with respect a person. Hallelujah. And if you say that you say, and this sister ain't got, a, ain't got one thing in the cupboard. And I know it. And I got, hey amen, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pushing. Now I got to find out where I'm going to put all the other groceries I got. And then I'm going to... She needs some help. And then I said, well, the Lord going to bless you. Hello, preachers. Hallelujah. Hello, preachers. A bunch of y'all that live in this broadcast, I'll tell you now. Hallelujah. That that mother that's raking and scraping. And, and, and you're putting pressure on her. You know what I mean. Well, you know, the widow woman in Elijah. No, we ain't in Elijah's day. Amen. Jesus said, amen, praise God, whatever you got, help the poor, feed the, clothe the naked, bless the widows, bless the orphans. That's what Jesus said. Amen. amen. Yeah. Huh? So if they do give you appreciation, how come we can't hurl out some of that money to feed them, them poor folks in our church? Yeah. Don't you get quiet on me. Don't you turn that dial off either. But the Lord gonna bless. No, that's why He got gave you gave it to you so you can bless them. Amen. All right, let me see the hands. Of everybody been blessed by this preacher here in this church. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We supposed to lead by example. If you ain't got no money, and I find out about, we gonna get you some. Hallelujah. Then we call it money. Let church say money. Now y'all say it like you really want some money. money. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now what am I going to say? We can make everything of God, but God, you be the same man. And God call us with a holy calling. We're supposed to be holy. And part of holiness is having compassion for one another. And wait a minute. Even for folks that don't even know Christ. People don't dock in the doors of nobody's church. Hallelujah. Well, we, you know, we only got enough for us. You know what? You're going to die with that little bit too. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Somewhere in the Gospels, Jesus said, when you give a feast, don't call all them that can invite you over to their barbecue and y'all just swap calories. Amen, somebody. He said, go get the blind, the halt, the lame, amen, them that, amen, I, uh, Nehemiah put it this way, send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. And you know what? He said, invite them to your house and put your best china out, ladies. Yeah. Amen. I'm going to give them, amen, praise the Lord. You know, when we do anything for the poor, we're giving God a sacrifice. 
Amen. Y'all ought to say, ouch, amen, or something. He that gives to the poor lends to the Lord, and the Lord will repay. Ecclesiastes 11 and 1, cast your bread out upon the water, and not many days his honey to come right back to you. God ain't going to never let you do anything without paying you off. You believe me, say amen. And when you give, Matthew, Luke 6 and 33, give, 6, 38, give, and it shall be given unto you. Why? So you can have more to give. Thank you, Lord. Tell you one thing, and I, I make my boast in the Lord, me and my wife, we bought somebody a car in this church. They didn't have a car. God told me and told my wife and didn't tell neither one of us that he was talking to the other. Why am I praise God? And I had already wrote the money out. <laughs> Amen. And then my wife told me what was going on and God already told me to. Do that, my part, but he moved on her. She didn't have to do it. You know, anytime God tells you something, you ain't got to do it. You wish you had, but you don't have to. Hallelujah. And do you not know, out of obedience to God, I'm off every weekend now? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. See, we, we don't, we, we, we don't know what God gonna do. But I'm praying that God, I sure would like to be off every, I want to be at church every weekend. Amen. This wing shift tied me up. Hallelujah. We can't have night service. Amen. Praying nothing else. Amen. This week, this week just tied me up. And I went to work a couple of weeks ago and the man said, we going to fire ships. I hollered, glory! Before I realized where I was. You know what I mean. Cause I'm going to act up. And praise God. I started telling God, thank you. Amen. I tell you, I had them big old tears rolling down my eyes. Lord, look at You know what to do. God, amen, started taking me back to the things that I was trusting him with. God bless me, amen. Honey, you blessed because I'm off every weekend now. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on, shout glory. But it means something to live holy. God say he won't withhold nothing from them that walk up right before him. They, they ain't doing me right on the job. Listen, I'm a witness that God, God will straighten them out. He'll either straighten them out or move them. No, you won't have to move. He'll straighten them out or move them. Amen. And that ain't happened just once in my life, but at least three times that I know about. And God did it. God did it. Why? Because my help was in the name of the Lord. Psalms 124 and 1. Let's bring it in right there. Psalms 124. Give me that last verse in Psalms 124. I will help. Is in the name. Psalms 124. Give me that last verse in there. Read. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Now you said that too proper. Say our. Our. Our help. Our help is, is in, in the name of the Lord. Now that ain't going to change. You may not, amen, you may not believe this. You may not accept it. But your help is in the name of the Lord. Man. We're blessed. Everyone stand. Everybody's bound on Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I dare you to be in next Sunday. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. That's the groundwork there. Amen. Y'all, y'all, y'all may be mad, but I tell you what, I ain't running. Said, man. Amen. Amen. And you that get this video, I tell you one thing. If you'll obey God, God not only will bless you, but he'll bless your family. And them that's them that's with you in your house. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. All right, brothers. It's pray time, praying time now. Amen. Praise the Lord. I won't say you brothers show sure looking good today. Amen. 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 Now. Amen. I, I wish I'd broke my burgundy suit. Amen. Pray go could have been twins. Amen. It's prayer time now. Amen. This is what I, I know this is what most of you come to church for. <laughs> we ain't doing the preaching because we, we, we trying to get to prayer time. Amen, prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Am I right? Amen. Amen. Let's be honest. Tell you stay in the church. I endure the preaching just so I can get prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It's prayer time now. I want my deacons on this altar with me. I want my missionaries. My wife, them on this altar with me. No, 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 no. Y'all, y'all come, come aside. We gonna, we gonna, we gonna pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. 
I ain't, God ain't told me to call nobody out. I ain't going to call nobody out. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Then I get in the flesh and ain't nobody going to get nothing. Amen. Hallelujah. You won't pray. I'll make your way to this altar right now. It's something about Jesus. Something about Jesus. Let the church say something about Jesus. Let the church say something about Jesus. <sighs> Everything we need is in the Lord. Amen. Can we all agree on that? All over the building. Everything we need is in the Lord. It ain't in Pastor Douglas. Amen. And I say this before I pray for anybody. Look, God, whatever God do for you, don't you go nowhere and lie on me. And you know that, that preacher prayed for me and God, the devil is a lie. I ain't no power in me, but I got faith. And he said, I, with faith, we can move mountains. Amen. Amen. I got faith in his ability. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We done had enough folks get delivered on this altar. We already know God. God's something else. He's something else. He's something else. Hallelujah. Uh, amen. I make our boast in the Lord. Amen. We make our boast in the Lord. Ain't no sickness, no disease, no temperament. And when I say temperament, that devil that's bothering you in your mind, the devil is like, he gonna stop now. Hallelujah. He gonna stop now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Everybody don't need physical healing. There's things in here that ain't right. There's bondages in here that ain't right. That's holding you and God wants you free. Amen. Amen. I say God wants you free. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, go ahead and tell him what you want. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Ain't nobody looking at me. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Everybody's mind on the Lord. Get your, get it on your mind what you want the Lord to do for you. And it'll be done. Amen. It shall be done. It shall be done. You, Amen. It shall be done. By you getting in line, you already make it known that you want his help. God won't let you down. He will not let you down. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. All right, you sisters, get around. Good.